Today, I'm talking with Athos Silicon, a company spun out of Mercedes-Benz with a mission to create an MSOC to enable a safer approach to building autonomous systems. They say legacy PC-like architectures are the way forward for autonomy. So let's go find out some more. Thanks for Thank you very much for joining me in the studio today. Thank you. Okay, look, first question I've got is I've gone through your website and sort of the thing that's caught my eye is a hell of a sentence. So I'll read that out right now. Um, Athos Silicon is building the world's first functionally safe chiplet-based compute platform for real-time autonomy in robotics, (laughs) automotive, and avionics. Now, that is a hell of a sentence. (laughs) And there's a lot to unpack there. Um, So I guess what what I'd like to know is maybe we can start from the bottom of that sentence. What do you mean by real-time autonomy in robotics, automotive, and avionics? What what are you trying to achieve here? Whoa, 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 hold there. Only 12% of you are subscribed. Do yourself a favor and subscribe for daily engineering content. All right. Well, so today the computers that you can buy uh, are all designed the same way. They have CPU, GPU, NPUs, but okay. they have a, a fundamental flow. They have a single point of failures. And when you have single point of failure, you get into systems that can fail. And then you need to start torturing yourself to know how you're going to do a backup system. Because if you're driving a car, you can't let it down uh, if you have a failure. Right. So, um, right. Okay. So that, that's the thing about the single point of failure, right? If you're, having, if you're driving a car and one number gets, ah, you have an overflow here or something there that, that, you know, causes a cascade. That's a real big issue when you're driving. Exactly. And you can't, you can't let this go, correct? Like you, if you are sleeping in your car that is driving between San Francisco and LA, uh, that car cannot be failing while you're sleeping. So you need something super robust. And for the moment, the way everything was designed was to patch by adding external chips and trying to find schemes uh, that are, you know, a little bit safer, but nothing was designed for safety first. So we we decided to start designing for safety first, take the specification, you know, ISO 26262 and so on, and and really design a chip that can fulfill all of the requirements at once. So what is your solution exactly? So you've Really, the issue is a single point of failure of traditional uh, computer architectures. And you've got a solution that sounds like it's going to automotive, robotics, et cetera, that sort of area. What is your solution to the issue? What, what, are, you, what are you selling, I guess? So when you have a, a monolithic chip, so if you have only one chip inside your chip, what happens is if there is any failure, you know, transistor failure, high energy particles on any anything that cause a problem mm-hmm. that's you it's over for that chip you need to reset it because you can't track down those kind of nightmares so what we decided to do is to have multiple of those chips inside the same package and okay. that's called chiplets and with chiplets we can now make system where multiple systems that's why we call it the msoc the multiple system where you have multiple MSI controller, set. you have multiple uh, CPU clusters, you have multiple of everything. And if something goes wrong in one of them, a voting system will figure out what's wrong with it and will resolve the problem without you even knowing about it. Wow, how interesting is that? So now you no longer have this single point of failure. You might have, for instance, three CPUs. Is, is that around... Is that pretty much what's happening here? You have like three CPUs, three memory units, all with identical contents and processes. And the second something goes wrong in one of them, it goes, ah, that guy, he's not right. Forget about him. Use these other two. Yep. So you, you, you start by this, correct? Right? Like you start by looking if everything happen, is happening in time. So, for example, if you are doing an inference because you want to detect pedestrian, you're going to check, you know, how, how long it takes typically to do this. And then the three chiplets that we have on board will all verify that the work was done in time. If one of them sees that uh, it's not in time, that may be a glitch. But if two of them see that it is not in time, then they can override the vote and say, we need to redo that. And right. when so, they do that, okay. you, you, you can take mediation, correct? You can start doing things differently. And then mm-hmm. you can even vote for resetting the chiplet. So if you see a lot of problems, 
you don't have any more backup, but for a few seconds, you can say, okay, this triplet is misbehaving. Let's reboot it first and see what is going on. So it buys you a lot of time without degrading too much the algorithm. So you, you are still a level four if you want to be a level four. Uh, if you want to be a level three, you can, you can do the same thing. So you can keep to the mission you have. And in fact, when we go for the highest level of autonomy, we had extra chiplets. So you have too many at the beginning. And if for any reason one fell, you just, you know, replace one with another and then you just keep driving and no, nobody knows that things happen except the architect that will take the measure later on to understand the problem. Interesting. So I feel like I learned about this in, in a class in university before. Is, is this like a new way uh, of thinking of architectures, particularly in automotive applications, or is this taken inspiration from legacy systems that came before it? So, in fact, those systems are, you know, pretty old. Uh, if you look at Airbus and Boeing, they are using mm -hmm. those systems inside their planes. They, they have diversity of computers, so they have different brand of computers, and then they all vote together to make sure that the yes. system is safe. We kind of do the same thing. So we try to, uh, uh, you know, have the same voting mechanisms or something. But instead of doing it through cabinets inside a very big airplane, we make it into something that is that big. And, and in fact, we, we can cut power tremendously. Uh, one of the things that is, is a problem for autonomy is you cannot be using too much power because Cars are becoming electric, and if you use too much power, mm -hmm. it's becoming a really yeah. You lose power. your range. You yep. lose your range. Right? Actually, there's an interesting number for about each hundred watt you use on a on a regular electric car, you lose about fifteen miles of range. So is that right? Yes, it's a lot. It's a lot. Hundred watt is the equivalent of one human running. So you know, it's it's a lot of energy. People don't think about it when they are uh, when they are you know doing electronics and, and so on and you know especially the, the GPU TDPs right now are out of control. But mm -hmm. uh, if you come down to what it means, uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, Hundred watts is, is a lot of energy. Very cool. So, how long ago was the company founded? Is it only it's been a sort of couple of years old, or you've been around for? So we are we are about four months old. Uh, we got spin four out months of, old. Yep. Oh, so amazing. We are, we are spin out of Mercedes Benz. So the the point is, we have been doing this uh, inside our previous employer for a long time. You know the mm -hmm. the project uh, MSOC started in 2020. So you know for a long time we have invested a lot of R and D and and you know very thankful to Mercedes Benz for what they did for you know for the for the product. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now they decided that we need to scale up. So they spin us off to be able to now propose the same hardware to all car manufacturers and, you know, robotics and all of the other market. We are going to start. Uh, we are getting a lot of people talking to us right now. One was surprisingly medical because they need safety. Medical. Yes, yeah. that makes complete sense. Yeah. You know, your heart moves amazing right now. Uh, Sometimes just go, oops. Uh, it's better if the hot monitor doesn't go hoops when you are, you know, connected to it. Uh, that is something you wouldn't like. Hey, quick question about your time at Mercedes. Did you ever uh, interact with Lewis Hamilton? Uh, let's say that on the hierarchy, we had the same boss, but very far away. Uh. Oh, shame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. So I, I love what you're doing here. So you've been here for about four months. Have you got any silicon yet? Or where are you in sort of the grand scheme of things? So, in fact, there is silicon coming back shortly. So, the, by the mm -hmm. end of the summer, we'll have the chiplets in hands. Very uh, excited. And, uh, uh, how to say, you're always excited of the work that is coming on the front of you. <laughs> so, it's a lot of work, right? It's, 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 it's a campaign of, uh, of validation. Um, so, fortunately for us, you know, we, we, we have a partnership with DreamBig. You know, it's a, it's a company that makes hubs uh, chiplet hubs, so we, we work very closely with them. Um, and they, they are very, very competent into anything that is making chiplet systems. So we, we had great help from them on, on how to 
package your thing and how to do the physical parts of the problem. And then, you know, we are, we are working with them on, uh, on making sure that the IPs that we have invented can scale inside the industry too. So, you know, we, we think we are in good shape for a startup getting your silicon after, you know, five, six months. Yeah, that was incredibly fast. <laughs> With with no visible competition, by the way, there's nobody else on the industry that has any voting system on board. So yeah. they, they they have it, you know, in cabinets and in in flying airplanes. But we are very lonely in the uh, in the notion of having you know functional safety done with voting redundancy. It's it's very unique. All on one piece of silicon. All on three pieces of silicon in one package. Amazing. Right. That is so interesting. So you've got a product called, oh, well, it is the MSOC multiple system on chip. What is, what is the name of it? Yeah, this is the name of it. Multiple system on chip, the code name is Polaris. Uh, code name that, Polaris. So code name Polaris. is going to be that big. That's a big old chip. It's pretty big. So you have the RAM here. You have the chip plant in the center. Mm -hmm. And this is basically... Uh, Almost the size of uh, what's today industry is being used for level two autonomous driving, but this is capable of level three and level four. Right. So, you know, so what you've done here with with Polaris and the multiple system on chip is you've taken an existing sort of legacy approach uh, to true safety, which is having a supervisor and then having multiple of each section of your computer architecture which each supervise each other and vote out the one that may have an issue right and that's usually if you were only to only have one of these pieces one issue could cause your whole system to fail you know causing a car accident something like that so what you've got now is you've got a supervisor with your many uh multiple system on chip blocks and oh sorry so it's fascinating because you realize that it is not that simple so you can't have a supervisor because the supervisor may be failing. So in fact, right. you, need, you need actually something that is a, a three votes. So a vote over of three. And mm -hmm. the three of them have to be able to diagnose the two others. And, and that's a very, it's a, I call this a silicon democracy where <laughs> the, the two that are right actually will overwrite the wrong one. And it's supposed right. to be working this way, right? So it's it's very different from uh, uh, if you if you spend time intellectually to figure out how to, how to do the right way, uh, there is no voting of one ultimate decider. Um, you have right. you have reliable system on the side that can say, okay, now that you have taken the decision, I can go and do things, but you want each chiplet to be verifying the two others and the three of them voting. And in fact, they all vote in the inbox of the other chiplet. So like this, you guarantee that all of them are capable of voting. And then if one of them is failing, it will be missing its votes or it will vote wrong. But the two others can see it. And that's the point. That's the point of this IP. It's very new because we... Right, and that's the big difference between the legacy... Uh, exactly. version to attack this problem right how so, interesting if you look at what people do with chiplet usually they try to disaggregate the the, the computer so they mm -hmm. put cpu gpu npu on different chiplets and then they aggregate them and they what they think is that by using different process technology they can use the best transistor for each things which is true it's it's working if you are only interested into performance but in our case, mm -hmm. we are interested into performance. We want to be able to lead on performance. And I'll explain how we do this later. But, but most importantly, we wanted a system that has undisputed uh, safety quality to simplify the problem of autonomous driving. Because today, uh, an autonomous driving software is about 1,500 little software working together, you know, inferring pedestrian and, and so on. And then you, you run your big machine learning to drive the car, but you need all of those little details of making sure there's no kids on the front of the bumper, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, you, you know, I, I always explain, if, if you look 
your kids, if you have kids, what do they play into your garage? Very often people, you know, their kids go and they're in the garage, they are playing hide and seek mm -hmm. into the garage. Now, yeah. if you say, if you say, I'm on your car, if you take your fob and you say, hey, car, come here, uh, you better be sure that kids. there's no kids yeah. under the car. So, you know, yes. what you see today, the, you know, the robot taxi things, um, this is only a very subsystem of what autonomy will be. Autonomy will be much larger than this. You're going to end up with having to make sure there's no kids under the, the car, that if your wheels are, come, you know, are not straight, before you put the wheel straight, make sure there's not a two years old into the fender. You know, there's all of those mm -hmm. little details that, you know, high brands, you know, like my previous employer, they want to be sure they don't hurt anybody. So mm -hmm. they need all of this safety and all of those verifications that are tiny programs verifying a lot of things. So you have your big machine learning driving, and then you have a, a, a very large number of programs in parallel figuring out no kids under, no kids on the side, you need to see for level four, you know, all the way to the skin of the car. So, you know, you have 16 cameras, you have a couple of LIDARs and so on to be sure that you're not hurting anybody. Mm -hmm. And when you aggregate all of this into a system, you end up with something that is extremely complex. And if you do that in software, you are totally unable to certify. You, you end up with trying to certify a supercomputer. And this, if you try to write the documentation, will take two or three centuries with a lot of engineers. So yeah. it's not possible to get uh, you know, this on the road certified and being able one day if you have an accident to go and talk to the judge and say, I did all of my homework because it's too much. So what we do with the chip is we simplify all of this with hardware scheduling. So the voting system I was talking about, yeah. this guarantee execution by hardware and your, your certification book is one tenth of what it was supposed to be because now you can trust that the hardware will make it hardware. easier to verify. Yeah, exactly. And that's so do you feel like this, this hardware approach is really the missing key in fully secure safe autonomous vehicles it is it is if you look today you have robot taxi on the road and they get they get a waiver from the certification they none of that's crazy certified. they basically use the argument that if i have driven one million miles one million and one will be safe but in fact this is a statistical approach but every mathematician know you have the other side of the coin that is called mm -hmm. game theory and it is not because you throw a coin five times and it comes down face five times in a row, then six will be face. So, yeah. in fact, you need... There's always that chance, and you can't have this sort of chance when you're dealing with these very safety-critical machines. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And what if the chance is you on the front of the bumper at 130 miles per hour, right? So you... I don't want to take, I don't want to take those yeah, odds. But, <laughs> but that's the point, right? Like... When, when you do certify a consumer car, not a robot taxi, you have a lot higher proof to make. You need to do a formal verification. And mm -hmm. today's system without the MSOC, they have no site to get to certification. Amazing. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much for your intuition on this. It was really good to talk with you today. Thanks so much for joining me. Yep. And uh, everybody's welcome to contact us. See you. Awesome. Sweet, we'll have a full article right up on your on IP exchange. If you liked the video, give it a like, subscribe, and stay disruptive.